Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. It's always a dangerous proposition, but I'll try to keep us on the straight and narrow. Uh, first thing Ren always says is turn your phone off or turn it to mute. mute. Always wear a condom and make sure you get here on time, which is 1030, which is we're going to start right on time. Today we are very fortunate to have a guest speaker who's, uh, well, he's walked up quite a long ways. Personally, for me, I can't even get out of my bed and walk to the bathroom in the morning. And James has been able to walk from Potty all the way to Phuket, which is over a thousand kilometers. So I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty nice deal. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce James Wild Wolf Valentine, and he's going to tell us about his experiences walking and raising money for charity. So here we go. Okay, everybody, up with the music. Anyone walked from Bangkok to Chiang Mai? Oh, quite interesting, so we'll get into that in a minute. So people ask me, why did you walk? What was the genesis? What was the first idea? Because everything in life starts with an idea. So you've got to go back, February of last year, 2022. I don't know when, but the first week of February, I got a message saying that a friend of mine had a brain tumor. So this friend, his name is No-No, this is No-No up here, this one up there, the handsome guy. Uh, No-No, he got a brain tumor, and his brain tumor was about the size of an egg. And he needed about 1 million pesos, what's that, 600,000 baht for his operation. He didn't have enough money. So I thought, okay, my family name is Valentine, Valentine's Day is coming up soon. Why don't I do a charity walk, just contact some of my friends. So I did. I did a walk, this photograph was taken during the walk, so in the Philippines, quite an interesting story, you see these sand castles? It's illegal to build sand castles on the beach in the Philippines, you ever heard of such a stupid thing? Do you know why it's illegal to build sand castles on the beach? Because the environmental agency which had their desks in Manila, you know, one of the most polluted cities in the world. They look out their window, they see all the pollution. They say, oh no, you can't be building things on the beach because that's the natural habitat of crabs and fish and seaweed and God knows what. So they do not let you. So you'll see about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, they have these troops, you could call them, like uh, Gestapo, walking up and down the beaches in Boracay, destroying these beautiful sand castles. Luckily, this was about two o'clock or one o'clock in the afternoon, and the sand castle was still standing. And as you can see, February 14, 2022. So that was uh, part of my walk for no-no. So let's just go through this for a moment, because I want you guys to understand why I'm a walker, because I'm not really, I wasn't born a walking guy. So this is uh, Boracay. Anyone here been to the Philippines? Yeah, all right, a lot of you, horny men. And uh, what about, uh, anyone been to Boracay? Yeah, have you been to Boracay recently in the last five years? No, because President Duterte has destroyed it with all of his silly laws. You know, you cannot drink beer on the beach in Boracay. You cannot eat food on the beach in Boracay. What's the point of going to a beach if you can't drink and eat and have fun, yeah? So anyway, this is uh, Boracay, small island that's about 10 kilometers long by three or four kilometers wide. If you do like I did, make your own little trails through the jungles and down to the beaches, you can actually do about 29 kilometers for one lap. So I did two laps of Boracay raising money for no-no. 
Uh, the first lap was 29 kilometers and the second lap was 21. So here I am starting, six o'clock in the morning, and this tree right outside of my apartment in Boracay, and it says February 14 starts 6 a.m. That's kilometer zero. Now this is kilometer one, about 10 minutes later. You look at the stormy skies, you see that? So later you'll see we had tropical typhoon came through and the weather was terrible. Now I'm only kidding with that. So this is about uh, 40 minutes later, look at the dark sky still. You see that green contraption? That's a Philippines tuk-tuk. Uh, they don't really have very good tuk-tuks in the Philippines. I'm sure you guys have been to Antilles City. They have these one-seater tuk-tuks, nowhere for your luggage, nowhere for your girlfriend. Uh, quite stupid, really. But anyway, that's the Filipinos. God bless them. That's a Filipino tuk-tuk. It's on the side of a motorway. That's actually quite a large one there. So moving along, here I am zooming around the island. And as you can see, photo by photo, the sun's coming out, the weather's getting nicer. And here I am. If you just go back a slide there. Uh, I need a pointer, so I don't know. How do I use the pointer on this one? Maybe that. No? no. I turned it off. <laughs> There you go. Uh, any idea? Pointer? Oh, there you go. You see that little hilltop there? You see that one? Yeah. Yes? All right. That's two and a half kilometers away. So the next slide jumped to it. So I've just all of a sudden there gone two and a half kilometers. That's the highest point in the Philippines, by the way. Get a nice view. So you see all these little coves? So some of those I call Secret Beach. Really, really pretty, really nice. Unfortunately, you don't get Gestapo there. All right, zooming along, nine kilometers. Here I am, 10.50 in the morning. Time for a beer. Who likes to drink beer? All right, well, you three that like to drink beer, I'll buy you a drink afterwards, okay? All right, the rest of you can stuff it. All right, this is a one liter bottle of beer. It's really good in the Philippines. They have what they call king bottles. This is uh, a king size one liter bottle of Blue Eagle. In uh, Thai money, about 45 baht, which is not bad. One good thing about the Philippines, the beer is a lot less expensive than it is in Thailand, which is nice. And here I am, 10.50 in the morning, kilometer 19, having a beer at Secret Beach. Uh, John, you want to play video number one there? Yep. Let these people see what, uh, what the Philippines is really like. Come and stand next to my friend Sammy here when he gets that one going. All right, we've rehearsed this in advance. So he knows what he's doing. You see the one at the top there? That's it. Click away. Wait a second here. All right. Wait a second. Now we're not blaming this on John. We're blaming it on the other John who didn't show this John how to set things up. Play. So volume would be good. I'm at kilometre 19, I'm at a place that I call Secret Beach. If you look here, look how beautiful the water is. There's nobody here, only me and the fish. This is a beautiful beach, really fantastic. So I'm here, kilometre 19, and I'm having a drink stop, look. Hey, beer. Gold Eagle. All right, this is me. I've got to go, I've got about another 10 kilometers to go back to uh, the starting point. That'll be kilometer 29. And then this afternoon, do it all again. On out. All right, there you go. So back to the presentation. Just to show you how beautiful some of the beaches are. Now, the reason that beach is empty is because they've built a barbed wire fence around it. Again, this is Boracay. Ever since Duterte became president in 2016, he decided that him and some of his cronies, they can, um, they can own parts of Boracay, and the first thing to do is put up barbed wire fences. Well, if you're a bit of an in inventive person like me, some of you are the same, you find a way through the jungle, and then you can, uh, be okay on your beach of your own. Okay, here we go then. So that was at uh, the beach. So after that, that was the photograph I showed you before. That was taken at 10.35. Look how beautiful the weather is now. So it started off really stormy that day and turned into one of the hottest, sunniest, sunniest days of the year. This is at the top end of White Beach, for those of you who've been to White Beach. This was during COVID times, hence uh, the beach was pretty deserted. So there we are. I went back home for a spot of clothes, have some lunch, and uh, you can see I've got my morning clothes and got the afternoon clothes there. Plus, I have three adopted cats. So the cats wanted their lunch as well. So as kind as I am, I thought I would give my cats. Uh, in case you're wondering what their names are, we have Smokey 
and sooty and sweet. So if those of you born in, born in the 60s or 70s or even 50s, there was a television program in England called Sooty and Sweet. So two of the names I gave my cats. Like I, I have two children in the Philippines, you'll see them in the video later. Uh, they have two pigs, Pinky and Perky. Yes, see, so. All right, so here I'm going, starting the afternoon at 2.15. 3.20, look how hot it is. Jesus, man, it was hot that day. Kilometre 37, kilometre 38. Here I am at a different beach, quite near to the secret beach. So time for two beers and a swim, how about that? And then kilometre 40, sun starting to go down. Kilometre 43, more beers, of course, it was Valentine's Day. Sunset, seven, six, hello. Hello, hello. hello. coming back. All right. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. All right, walking past the city mall. Kilometre 49, almost half going past the, the disco there. And then there you go, finished after 14 hours and two pairs of shoes. So that's what happens in my shoes. So if you do lots of walking, your shoes do wear out. So time for another fundraiser, ha, ha, ha. All right, you see the words at the bottom? And the operation was a success. And Nono got mad later the same year. All right. There's a picture of Nono. So I helped raise 2,000 US dollars for him just in a couple of weeks. And he had his operations and it was a super success. So uh, how about a round of applause for Nono? All right. Can you imagine one of you or one of your friends gets a brain tumor? No, those things are life threatening. Nobody wants an egg on their head. All right, why well, walk to Phuket? That's why we're here today. The beginning, February 2022. No, no, with his brain tumor. Then February of this year. Anybody familiar with Nikki's bar up on Soy Bacow? All right, the beer drinkers have been there. Okay, I was in there early February, and I was thinking, because my family name is Valentine, I did a walk the year before on Valentine's Day. I was just thinking maybe I should do another charity walk this year. So I was in there, and I saw on the wall behind the, behind the bar, uh, Nikki's Bar, in conjunction with Take Care Kids, have raised 900,000 baht in the last 10 years, which is fantastic. So I thought, well, who is Take Care Kids? So I then went to, with Sammy actually, remember we met up with the owner, Gio, I think you guys, Gio's done a talk here before, couldn't Gio, of the Take Care Kids. How many people are familiar with the Take Care Kids? Yes, all right, well, it's a, it's a wonderful foundation here in Padia that uh, looks after orphan children, basically. So we did a walk here. Sam is in the picture somewhere. And here we are, it's a 33 kilometer trail. So just outside the hotel is the end of the boardwalk in Padia. We went from the, the north of Padia to the very south of John Tien, as far as you can go on the Bart bus route, basically. And that's 15 kilometers, 15 kilometers back, and an extra three to get to the Padia beer garden at the end. All right, anybody recognize the guy lying down on the ground there? <laughs> Uli. Uli, stand up, introduce yourself, mate. Yeah, this is Uli. He came with us, so quick round of applause for Uli. And just behind Uli, if I don't turn it off again. There's Sammy. All right, round of applause for Sammy. Sammy and Uli. Because <laughs> they did the walk with us that day. Yes, there you go. All right, nine o'clock, there's Uli sitting on the ground again. Uli, why are you always sitting on the ground, lying on the ground? Is that just your style? No, it's because uh, I'm an old man, and when I look in a group picture, picture, I can see when I stay there, I play on the side. All right, excellent. <laughs> okay, quick funny story. So this is kilometre number four. <laughs> At about kilometre 4.2, Uli had removed his shirt, and he, he'd gone up ahead by a couple of hundred meters. He's walking backwards. So I said, Uli, where are you going? Oh, he says, when I lied on the ground, I took off my shirt, and I think I've lost my shirt. So he went back. We never saw him again that day, which was kind of funny, yeah? There you go, Uli, what a character. Here we are now, we're down at the uh, Soy 5, John Tien Beach, outside the 7-Eleven, having a beer, of course. 11 o'clock, more beer. And then 12 o'clock, anybody been to the number one sign down at the very far end of Jong Tien? Yeah. If you take the BART bus as far as you can, it turns just before there. If you walk another few hundred meters, you come to that sign. So that was four hours, 15 kilometers. Then we had lunch with Debbie. Thank you for lunch, Debbie. And Kun Gio, thank you for the t-shirts. So very good. 
So they supported us and we supported them, which is good. So here we go. In the end, there were six of us that did the second half. These two ladies joined us. This lady here is a lot of fun. Uh, her hash name is No Control, but spe spelt with a C U N T. So No Comp. Control. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, she's a very good friend of ours. She's a super alcoholic. So people were asking me why I was two hours late getting to the finish point. I said, well, these crazy ladies wanted to drink all the time. I couldn't stop them. So here we are, 1.59 p.m. You know how it is? 7-Elevens, they're very accurate with their, with their uh, displays. And you can't buy a beer at 2.00. So we got in there, 1.59, had a beer. And then here we are having more fun with the ladies. They were well drunk by now. And then a more fun again, walking past the beach. And then down to the lighthouse. I thought I'd have a bit of a rest after I have another beer. And here we are getting towards Bali High. And then finally finished right outside the Holiday Inn here. Took uh, nine hours and a bit to get back to the uh, starting point. And then our final destination to make it 33 kilometers was the Padia Beer Garden. So there we are, all right? So, and in the end, we raised 71,400 baht for the Take Care Kids, which is pretty good. So in conjunction with Nikki's Bar, uh, the Padia Hash House Harris, uh, the Soy Six Corner Bar, Witherspoons, and DB Car Rentals. So, uh, and here's a whole bunch of us. Sam is in the back there with his wife. Like I say, uh, Uli is missing from the picture because he'd gone back to find his shirt. So there you go. <laughs> and in total, we raised 71,400. And again, that was only with about two weeks' notice, so that was a pretty good effort by all of us. So, round of applause for us for raising 71,000 for the charity there. All right, why walk to Phuket? This is why we're here, yeah? So, we had No Nose Charity Walk, then we had the Take Care Kids Charity Walk. So, after it was done, again, with Sammy, he's a good driver. He took me over to the Take Care Kids Foundation and we sat down with uh, Kun Jio and we talked about what do you really need? And he says, we need one million baht, this is back in March, we need one million baht to finish their new, uh, they're building a new foster home for their children. And in 17 years of existence, they've always rented. So now they actually own the site, they own the building, and at that time they needed about 1.1 million baht to finish the building. So I thought, heck, if I raise 71,000, if I raise 2,000 US dollars for no, no, maybe we could raise some money for these guys, you see. So that's kind of what we did. Started on April 20 at Witherspoons. In the end, according to my GPS, walked about 1,030 kilometers, or 1,050 kilometers. Who knows, because there's always extra bits where your GPS is not really working correctly and other little bits, but never mind, little side trips. Like my good friend Sammy here when we were in Bangkok. We did 14 kilometers on my first day off, remember? And 12 kilometers on my second day off. All because Sammy wants to go shopping, yeah? All right. So those kind of extra mileages don't count. So it was well over 1,100 miles in the end. And it was the hottest weather of the year. So people ask, why did you actually do it starting in April when you knew the weather was damn hot? Well, I'm going to England this coming Saturday. I'm not coming back for a while. It was my 60th birthday on July 4 this month. And how many days was my birthday party? Six days. Six days. Yeah, Uli was at all six days, which was good. Yeah, I'm not a normal guy. And you'll find that if you're going to walk to Phuket, you can't be normal. You know, you have to be abnormal, and I'm extremely abnormal. So my 60th birthday this month, July 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, to keep it easy for people like Uli who get confused easily. <laughs> six days birthday party, yeah? Because if I'd have done it like July 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or something, you'd have got all confused and not known where you were going. All right, so here you go. Bangkok, you all know where it is, Padia City. But that's Highway 7. I didn't walk on Highway 7. I walked on Sukhumvit Road. Anyone walked along Sukhumvit Road? Because it is horrible with a capital F. <laughs> Effing horrible, all right? And up here, uh, Highway 3, it turns into Highway 34. And if you ask me what was the worst day, the worst two days of the walk, it was from here to right by the airport up into Soy Cowboy, you know. Jesus Christ, horrible walking conditions. You'll see it on the video. Hey, who's that lying on the ground, Dooley? <laughs> what is it with you, man? Yeah. So once again, Sammy 
and Uli and a whole bunch of other people. There's more inside, but you can't see them. So we started with the spoons, which was nice. And of course, what are you going to drink? Guinness. So somebody kindly bought me a pint of Guinness, which was very nice. Oh, by the way, you're probably wondering what am I wearing here? All right, see my cape, see my shirt, see the shoes, see the socks. This is the gear I wore every single day. So some of you are going to ask later, how many pairs of shoes did I use? Well, the first pair I used, I bought at Decathlon, and if you go to the cheapy aisle, the first row is 450 baht. But they are so light and so comfortable, that's what I started with. Day four, day five, day six, walking into Bangkok, those things, am I allowed to say shit? Those things turned to shit, and my feet were so hurting. Any of you ladies, you ever like tenderize the steak with one of those metal hammers and you like pound it, pound it, pound it? That's what it's like walking into Bangkok because the road is not normal surface. If you walk on the actual freeway, the asphalt is relatively smooth, but if you walk on the service road, the asphalt is like 40 years old. It was made with big sharp pebbles, but also all that's left is the big sharp pebble, pebble, pebbles. So you imagine walking along, the big backpack on your back, Jesus Christ, my feet got so tenderized. That was one of the worst things, because once you get tenderized feet, they just hurt 24 hours a day. So anyway, pine sticking has helped, definitely. So whoever sponsored me for that, thank you very much. And you almost sponsored me for a pint of Guinness in Bangkok, remember, till you found out the price, and then you cried like a baby. So <laughs> that's for another talk, that one. How much was it for a pint of Guinness? 360. Yeah, 100 and 180 for, uh, you thought it was 180. And there's Gio saying goodbye to me. All right, so walking on Sakhambit Road, not so bad. This is relatively smooth. Whoops, never mind. That was relatively smooth asphalt there, this stuff. But even that is a bit pebbly, you see. You can kind of see the grains in it. Uh, the grains are not good for your feet. Here's my super lightweight shoes, 450 baht. Like I say, they turned to shit. Only lasted six days, but there you go. These shoes I'm wearing here cost 4,960 baht. They've already done 500 kilometers and they're still going strong, you see that? Uh, they're spongy, they're light. Oh. <laughs> If you're supporting, don't do what they're supposed to do. Then, anyone recognize any of these gentlemen? Because some are from Soy Six Corner Bar and the others are from Witherspoons, so I'm not sure of their names, but they actually walked the whole first 25 kilometers with me. There's Sammy again. The other man's name is French Erection, otherwise known as Dennis. Uh, they were the support team for the first day, so thank you very much for your support. All right, day number two, one of the best days of the entire walk, walking to Bang Sien Beach. Anyone been to Bang Sien Beach? Very, very nice, isn't that beautiful boardwalk they've got under the trees there? So thank you, Sammy joined me for the whole of that day. We had a really nice time, didn't we? Really, really nice. Had a few beers along the way, so there's Sammy there. And Sammy actually, he was my support vehicle for the first three days, which was really good of him, together with his lovely wife. Day three was also really, really unique and really nice. Uh, as you're going north, if you don't go on, if you go on Highway 3 and then you turn left towards the ocean, has anyone seen that new freeway that they built out over the ocean? They've actually built it 10 kilometers long. They've got a 10 kilometer four lane freeway, two lanes each side, which actually is built out maybe 200 meters from the mangrove swamps. Really, really nice walking conditions. So there I am walking on that new road there. And that's all kind of mud flats and really, really nice. And then there's Sammy with his wife Charlene, very, very good. So sometimes Sammy would walk with me and Charlene would drive the cars. Other times, remember how damn hot it was? Yeah, so I was just going to explain before, so there's me in the picture there, dressed identical to this, same hat, same headband, different cape though, the first cape was too small I realised, this one is 1.5 metres around, you see that? So on the really hottest days, you can hide your hands inside, and this is also Mark II shirt, my original ones had regular sized sleeves, the second ones I had made, the sleeves are 4 inches longer, See, that's a custom-made sleeves. You see that? So when you're walking in the super hot sun, first of all, the cape acts like an air conditioner. Because if you imagine, I've got a five kilo backpack in here, so it pushes the cape out. All the heat of the sun is on the cape. 
it's not on me. So you kind of get this barrier here of air, and when you get this barrier of air, it actually keeps the body a bit cooler. So even though it was, can I use the F word? Even though it was effing hot, end of April and early May, anybody remember this year how damn hot it was? But literally within 10 minutes of walking every day, your body is soaking wet already. So your shirt is wet, your shorts are wet, your socks are wet, everything is so super wet. So with a tiny bit of breeze, it kind of acts like a coolant. So maybe I'm nuts, like I said before, you cannot be normal to do these things. And people say, why are you wearing the black hat? I said, the black hat is not a problem. I've got no brains anyway. So the fact that the hat kind of has a shady area here, my head never got hot, which was all right. So not really a problem. All right, what does it say? The next three days were 75 kilometers of non-stop highway into Bangkok. Definitely day four, early morning start. This is saying goodbye to Sammy because him and his wife went back to Pattaya that day. All right, so uh, day five, the worst day is walk. Can you, John, play the next video? Thank you. All right, you guys, you're just gonna see here what the walking conditions are like. It's, it's quite a long video, but bear with it, all right? Uh, because the walking conditions are terrible. So it's not just the traffic, not just the pollution, it's everything, and you'll kind of see that in this video now. Well, here I am, ladies and gentlemen, it's my third live video. Volume, John. Yeah, wait a second. <laughs> it's my third live video of the day. Um, This is about 50 kilometers south of Bangkok, by the way. Highway 34. Very stony on the edges here. So I've got a, a really large blister on my left uh, heel, and I've got a small blister on my right heel. But I'm hobbling along. Oh, good at the children. But this is a uh, this is horrible. Walking along the side of the freeway. Nothing but traffic, noise, pollution. Look at the garbage everywhere. I mean, it's really disgusting, guys. Look at this. And this has been non-stop now, probably for the last 50 or 60 kilometers, the last two or three days. Ever since I left the beauty of Mansian Beach, that was lovely. But ever since I got back to highway number three, and this is highway 34, nothing but garbage along the side of the road. And it's not enjoyable walking at all. Walking on this crazy pavement, that's what's given me the blisters. Otherwise, like I say, sometimes I walk in the road, but then you're in risk of getting run over. So, <laughs> and I, I don't know how much further I'm gonna to go today, but I need to get to Bangkok by tomorrow. And you never know what's accurate these signs or not, but I've got still over 30 kilometers to uh, Soy Cowboy. So I want to do at least another five kilometers today. So maybe I'll do five or seven more, push it to 30 kilometers for today. That should leave me with 20 to 25 kilometers for tomorrow. Seems never ending at times this walk, but here we go. But look at the noise of these trucks. It's just never ending. This is now five hours today. Noise, noise, noise. So <laughs> hopefully when I get south of Mahin in a couple of weeks' time, It'll be beautiful by the side of the ocean, just listening to the seagulls and the fish. We say hello to all the people we can. Hello! So what do you care? You can wave if you like, yeah. Hello. So you can't be normal doing these the walks. I talk to everybody as I'm walking along. You know what I'm doing? There you go. We know what I'm doing, don't we? So we keep on going, like I say, for the good of the children. Hopefully I survive. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> like I say. How about hitchhiking? Hello! So many cow! Are you gonna run me over? You say hello, yes. Wrong television. God bless. So many cow. Alright, so there you go. See now I'm walking in the road. But this is nice, and this is smooth. And a lot of the way it's been really rocky on the edges here. This was giving me the blisters. Here we go, a couple of my fan club here. See if they will wave. So when you come, you say hello to the people. So when you come, I'm walking, you see that? 
everywhere and that just showed you a little bit I talk in another video I don't have time today but later in the presentation you'll see that about the um, how to how to view more videos I have a Facebook page called wild wolf walks if you go there I've got three videos per day for all of the days of the entire walk there's about 150 videos there and I don't expect you to uh, to view them all but if you go there it's just interesting to experience the conditions so it's not pleasant you got the baking heat you got the pollution you got the pain of your feet but you just carry on you know I had it in my mind I'm gonna do it and you just do it you know you wake up in the morning from your little hotel and John I can fast forward it a bit quicker if you want okay uh, there we go. Anyway, so that, that was good, that video. It just gives you a very good idea of what the walk was all about. So, anyone have a question right now? I've still got 15 more minutes to talk, but while we're just going through this here, just waiting. Oh, no, hang on for your questions. I think we're almost there, aren't we? Yeah. All right, so that gives you a very good idea what the walking's all about. So let's get to Bangkok now. So we had five days, six days of walking, and then walking, we had two days rest in Bangkok. We did the Hash House Harriers twice. We went to two or three malls. We walked up and down looking for restaurants and bars and markets and God knows what. Did 26 kilometers of walking on my two days off, which was not so great. I did buy a pair of shoes number two. They cost 3,000 baht and they lasted 550 kilometers. However, they were really about half a size too small. If you look at these shoes, my feet look quite big. These are size 11, I take size 9. I have two pairs of socks on. I used to have about 15 band-aids on each foot. I've got extra insoles in there. So between the insoles, the band-aids, the two, sometimes three pairs of socks. Uh, very, very good to have shoes which are two pairs too long. So I guarantee you, any of you want some advice, you're going to do a long walk. Buy shoes that are two pairs too long. Because my second pair of shoes, the ones that cost 3,000 baht, and they lasted 550 kilometers, 
I cut with the scissors and the knives, I cut holes in the toe, I cut holes at the little toe, uh, I cut all the webbing, I took out the laces, uh, just so your feet have some room to move, because the most important part of your body when you're walking is your feet, because they're the ones that take all the brunt of the walk. So there you go, Sam is with us again, in the middle there, and uh, the little lady there, Dawn is her name, Crack of Dawn is her hash name. Uh, she sponsored me for the 3,000 baht for the second pair of shoes, so thank you, Crack of, Crack of Dawn. And anyone been to Jack's Bar in Bangkok? It's right opposite the river, isn't it? Very, very nice bar, and not too much money at 10 o'clock in the morning for a king beer. See, Sammy, you left us too early, you see. You're about three kilometers too early you went out, so we had beers at the river there. And people say, did you take a ferry across the river? I say, no, I walked every single step to Phuket, so I went across the Taksin Bridge. Because right, you're allowed to walk across the bridge, so that was good. No, no ferries, no nothing. So Bangkok to Hua Hin, uh, pretty much the whole thing. I think it was Highway 33 coming out of Bangkok all the way down Highway 4, and then pretty much all the way down Highway 4. I did at one point, somewhere over here, there's like a shortcut road, but it's too dangerous because there's no uh, shoulder for walkers to walk on, and it's only two lanes, one lane coming this way, one lane going that way. That's I, on one of my videos I said, if ever I was gonna die on the walk, it would be on that kind of road, because it still has big trucks. So you don't want to be walking with big trucks. That's why I walked on the freeways, because the freeways are much safer. Because even though, and you'll notice on the video, I was walking with the traffic. What happened when I was walking against the traffic is the traffic blows your hat off all the time, you see. And it's quite annoying that your hat blown off. And if I was going to die getting hit by a big truck, I'd rather not know about it. So the fact is... <laughs> And with, with the big cake, pretty much my hands are free because taking photographs, making videos and things, you don't want to be carrying anything. So pretty much my hands are free. I walk with the cake stretched out. So trucks and people behind, they can actually read what you're doing. You see that? Raising a million baht for the children. So that was the idea. So walking to Hua Hin was very stinky. I don't know if many of you know that there's a salt flats there. Those salt flats, the first two or three of the, the salt ponds, are extremely uh, dirty water, it's gone off and very stinky. So the first maybe 100 kilometers outside of Bangkok, 100 kilometers into Bangkok was as stinky as hell, and 100 kilometers out of Bangkok was as stinky as hell. Finally, when you get south of Ch um, Cha An and south of Hua Hin, much, much, much better conditions. So I had some videos for that day, but we're not going to show them now. All right, Hua Hin, all the way down to Surat Thani. Uh, how many days? Oh, 21 days, 460 kilometers, including my longest day of all was 43 kilometers. I walked the one day. Uh, the shortest we walked was 9.2 kilometers on the final day into Phuket, and the second shortest was 9.3 because Sammy was there. He's an alcoholic. And so are the other friends. So, anybody been to Hua Hin Beach? Very, very nice beach. And it's approximately six kilometers long over to the Monkey Temple there where they have the nice little bars. So this is us. We walked about a kilometer to the beach. We walked another kilometer out. In the end, we did 9.3 kilometers that day. There's my good mate, Zach. He was with us. Uh, his hash name is Caroline. Don't ask why. But anyway, he was with us. Jane, Charlene, and Sam and Zach. And you see some of our beer bottles because walkers need refreshment. So somebody's going to ask later, what did you mainly eat and drink during the walk? The main things I drank was water, of course, chocolate milkshakes, if you can believe it, or chocolate milk, because it just makes you feel good when you're not feeling good, and good old Chang beer. Because oh, I like Chang beer. Some of my friends like Leo, but Chang is the one for me. Here we are. This is the start of the second day now coming out of Hua Hin. We did 9.2 uh, kilometers that day, 9.3. And here we are. Caroline, in four days, he walked 105 kilometers with me, which was good. So, And here we are, day number 22. Don't worry about that. But at that point, Zach, he, he gave up. You see their Sahi beer there? How much do you think for one beer at this expensive hotel? 1,600 baht, plus tax, plus plus. 
So it ended up maybe 1,800 baht. Thankfully, I didn't buy it, but I just drank it. So this handsome man here, I know it's known as sauerkraut bone collector, uh, Daniel. He bought two of these. They're three liters each, and you get two 250cc mugs for free. So we have uh, seven, seven liters of beer. That's Zach there, and he, this was his fourth day, and uh, this was the end, and he did 105 kilometers with us. Uh, and what happened after that? Oh, that was right. I walked eight kilometers along the beach, they shortcut in their car, and met me at the end of the beach. And this, for me, was probably the best out of all, the whole trip was 53 days. The walking was 48 days, which was 39 walking and nine rest days. It is so nice when you are walking, or I think I walked about 35 kilometers that day. It's so nice when you get to your destination and there's people waiting with bottles of cold beer. Look at that, wow, you know, unbelievable. That's what friends are all about, so thank you, Sammy, again. Thank you, Uli, because without guys like this, uh, it wouldn't be worth doing the walk because you need encouragement, you know. We'll talk about motivation. I stay in these like pretty shitty hotels because my budget was not big. So the average price between 400 to 600 baht a night. Uh, they all have the same little Toki TV with the same 33 Thai channels. So on my little phone, I used to watch YouTube in the evenings and then go to sleep 7.30, 8 o'clock. I'd have a lot of food in the evening, make myself tired, have a couple of beers, wake up 6.30 in the morning, Spend one hour getting ready because you got to, everything comes out of your backpack because everything is wet. So what's in the backpack? Two pairs of shorts and not these thick heavy ones, little tiny skimpy jogging shorts, you know, the little ones, no underwear because it just gets wet. So two skimpy pairs of shorts, one you wear, one for spare. Two t-shirts, one you wear, one for spare. Two headbands, one you wear, one for spare. One cape, you just wash it every day because it gets so wet, so dirty. You cannot believe some days on the highway, this thing turned black. That's how much pollution and how much dust and stuff is around. Amazing, but what made it worthwhile was the friends and the beer, of course. This was the following morning saying goodbye to Zach. So he left, and then I did 43 kilometers. That was my longest day, day number 23. You can see it took uh, nearly 10 hours, so 43 kilometers that day. And again, in the heat, oh, there's my new shoes. So there's something we do on our jogging club, is we drink a beer from the new shoe, but normally you empty the can into the shoe. Didn't want to do that because I was on my own and people were just, you know, I was an idiot walking along the road smelling like beer, you know. Ooh, man, why are you, you know, because this is funny, as you're walking along the road, the most people that see me are the vendors. Of course, all the drivers see you, but it's the vendors on the side of the road selling their coconuts or their mangoes, whatever they're selling. And 90% of them are middle-aged women, Thai women, of course, and when they see me coming down the road, most of them, <laughs> and then when they see you've gone, they come out again. Because most they don't know what I am. Am I a rapist? Am I an alien? <laughs> what am I walking down the road? So it's quite weird, really, the response you get from people. Uh, day 42, 10 hours, 41 minutes. Look at that. It's a lot of walking in one day. Jesus. So that's an average of four kilometers only per hour. Whew, some days are tough because your feet are hurting. Well, bother showing you that video. Okay, the last uh, 11 days was beautiful because anyone who's been through uh, Phang Nga, the province, those beautiful mountains, really, really nice. However, the worst thing about it was the rain. So John, have you got the third and final video there? It's the one where I'm looking cold and wet. Right, you guys, because the rain is terrible, because I can't carry an umbrella because I need my hands for the phone and everything. Uh, so the last 10 days, it rained a lot. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wet. And like I said, I'm not normal, so to keep myself amused when I'm making the videos, I kind of see myself. Knock. Who's there? Wet. Wet who? Me. I'm bloody wet. Rainstorm number five already today. 
Um, I walked in the rain quite a bit for the last 30 minutes since the last shower. I've kind of had enough. I'm already super wet. So once you're wet, that's it, you know. Everything will get dry in my room tonight, so it's not a problem. Anyway, I'm not going to uh, <laughs> regale you with a long story right now. But yeah, this rain is just a bit too heavy for walking right now. And this is Highway 4 going that way, which is my old friend from uh, a couple of weeks ago. And then turning left up here uh, is a shortcut way to Phuket, I believe. Right, I don't know the, the, the road number I'll give it to you tomorrow. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Uh, the floor is flooding. I'm in a little shelter here. Uh, gonna treat myself to some barbecue here. Got some barbecue magic mushrooms and some barbecue pork. How about that here? So I'm gonna have that as a snack while I wait for the rain to finish. Uh, I'm outside of 7-Eleven, which is amazing. Uh, those places are way too cold right now. I'm so wet. Uh, I will catch a uh, new motor if I go in there, so I don't need anything from there. And like I say, my hotel's only one kilometer walk away, so I'm not sure what time I'll get there, but I will post it later. Okay, everybody, <laughs> I'm not going to sing you singing in the rain, not in the mood for that now. The good news is, I'm only 60 or 70 kilometers from Phuket now, so uh, this ordeal will soon be over. It's quite a challenge when it's raining because uh, you kind of start and you stop, you start, you stop. My feet are wet, uh, which is not good. But like I said, I'm only about a kilometer from uh, my hotel, so that's good news. Should be there in the next half an hour. The rain seems to be easing up a little bit. All right, I'll have contact with you tomorrow. God bless and happy June 1 for tomorrow. No, no, who's there? Goodbye. <laughs> You see, I'm not normal, so that's what you have to do. So I make the videos, I try to make them fun for me, and hopefully if they're fun for me, they're fun for other people. Because through our hiking club that Uli, Sam and myself belong to, we have about maybe 200 members in Taria. A lot of them followed the videos, so they said what they would do is when they're having breakfast the following morning, if I posted four videos the day before, then they would watch all four videos. Kind of like watching a soap opera a little bit. So I'm trying to make it a little bit funny for them, tell them occasional jokes, sing the occasional funny song. Uh, John, it may be easier if you click the end button, it will go to the last slide. Then, no, maybe not. You just, you want me to do it or you do it? Uh, or whatever between us. Oh yeah, okay, well if you can zoom it through, that's fine. All right, well, we're wishing to get the presentation. Why don't we do a couple of uh, questions and answers while we're just waiting now. So anyone got a question? Don't be shy. Right over here. Yeah, microphone's coming. The answer is yes, you can join me for the next walk. Thank you. You, you know, you, uh, you you talked about your shoes. These are the best ones you said you bought before. Yes. Are they Nike shoes or is it a certain brand of? Or no, these are Nike. Just regular Nike shoes. Yeah. Right? So I was in Champon and on Google, you know, you go to Google for looking at things. I put Champon sports stores, uh, department stores, shoe stores. And I found one store in the whole town. It's not a huge town, but I walked around a couple of times looking for shoe shops. I found one shoe shop, and I said to the lady, she spoke a tiny bit of English, which is your most expensive pair of shoes? So I thought, well, I had the cheapest ones. They didn't last long. So I went in there, and she showed me these ones, and it was the only pair she had. She had a pair of about size nine, and then she had these ones of size 11. But the fact they were too big was perfect. So I just bought them immediately. It took me like 30 seconds to make up my mind because they are so light, but also so spongy. And they must be, uh, whoops, they must be genuine shoes because even till now, they've got a lot of sponge in the, in the cushion sole, which is really important when you're walking because those stones and uneven pavements, they kill you. Okay, next question. Can you tell us about your hiking club in this area? Yeah, it's called the Padia Hash House Harriers. There's really two branches. You have the Padia Hash House Harriers and you have the Jungle Hash House Harriers. Uh, the Padia Hash is every Monday. And at the uh, last Monday of June, we uh, had our 2000th run. So running once a week, every Monday. That's more than 40 years they've been going. So they started in the early uh, 80s. Uh, patiah3.com so if you want to write it down www.patiah3.com 
right? And we every Monday, uh, high season, we have about 120 members every week that show up. Low season, like now, we probably had 85 on Monday, I would think. So the lowest we have is 80 any Monday, and the highest we have uh, for our October fest last October, end of October, I think 129 members we had show up because they knew there was going to be free food and some giveaways and stuff like that. We have all kinds of ages from 40, the youngest man, up to 80 something. Uh, we have three groups. We have runners, walkers, and beer hunters. So those who don't want to do anything just go in one of the bar buses. Uh, the website gives all the information, but basically you meet before 3 p.m. at the Buffalo Bar up on Soy uh, Third Road, and you will take a vehicle. That's included in the price. 400 baht for men, that includes drink all you can, beer, and 150 baht for ladies. We subsidize the ladies, which is nice. Okay, more questions later. Only five more minutes for the presentation. So we're up to Phuket right now. And here we are. This was by far the best, most enjoyable day of all the days. We had 20 members from the Phuket Hash House Harriers. So you have the Padia Hash House Harriers, the Jungle Hash House Harriers. I go to London on Saturday, Sunday. They have the London Hash House Harriers. You know, Hash House Harriers are all over the world. You go somewhere, you just Google Hash House Harriers with the name of the city you're in, and you'll get there. So, uh, Sammy, are you in this picture somewhere? Where's your handsome face? Over there, there we go. So Sammy was there, and Zach. So Zach came back, and Sammy, he drove his car, can you believe it, on his own, all the way from Paddy. You should have raised money doing that, mate. Yeah. Anyway, so he drove all the way down. Zach was smart, he took an aeroplane. The rest of the people there, apart from myself, are uh, all from the Phuket Hash House Harriers. There's my original cape, 1.2 meters wide. This is 1.5 meters wide. And the original one was 1.6 meters high. This one is 1.8 meters high. And as you can see, perfectly down to the ground. But when you've got a backpack on, then it, it, it's raised nice and high, so that's good. All right, so there we are, trucking along the road. And after about 15 minutes, we were so lucky, we, and I was the leader. I said, everybody, we're a beer drinking club. Let's go in and drink some beers. And we did. We were happy. And then there were three of us, even more happy. So we had the kind of the crazy gang. So that's Zach, myself, and Sammy here. And here we are, uh, having another drink stop. And then we finally got to the Saracen Bridge. And I made a 10 minute video, which is one of the final videos you'll see on the, uh, the Wild Wolf Walks on Facebook. And there we are. And I actually bent down, it's on the video. And when we got there, I went 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I kissed the ground. I kissed the ground in uh, Phuket. And, and you'll see it on the video, I go. <laughs> Phuket <laughs> <laughs> tastes like shit. You know, shouldn't say that. But lovely, lovely place. But yeah, it, it, uh, the ground was not so clean. There you go. We do these things for charity. A few days later, I got on the aeroplane. I didn't drive back. Sammy offered to drive me, but he was the world's slowest driver, so I politely said no. I went on the aeroplane. And what did I wear at the airport? Yay! I wore all this, you see? Better than carrying it. So people looked at me a bit strange, but never mind. I get used to that after 50 days. So there you are. All right, the amount raised was 257,500, which all went to Take Care Kids. How about that? <laughs> now, I wanted to raise a million, but I didn't raise a million, but so what? You know, you try your best in life. And my sad I didn't raise a million? No, you know, I tried my best. You know, I'm not really a promoting person. I don't know, I don't have any media contacts. So if we're gonna go on television, so anyway, a few days later, I was invited to the Take Care Kids. Here are the children, and uh, there's the children again. And they made me this beautiful plaque. And this little girl, six years old, I think Wano was her name. So she wrote her name, or put the name, that that's her handprints. And this is a letter of appreciation, which is very nice. Uh, yes, very good. And here are my two children in the Philippines. CJ is my son, Christian James. He's 11 years old. And there's my daughter, Princess Joy. She's 13. Congratulations, 1,000 walk, Daddy. I love you very much, you see. And happy 1,000 walk and 1,000, you see. Congratulations, Daddy. And a beautiful letter they wrote me as well. You can't read it right now, but it's on the website. You can read it. Very, very nice. 
So that's about it. So how to view the Palais de Phuket Walk. If some of you want more details, you want to see the photographs, because every single day there's about 40 photographs, there's a video of the route, because I have the GPS and it makes a video of the route, and it's 3D, which is nice as well. And I have about three or four, which Uli watched all of them, three or four of my homemade videos every day. So it's quite interesting. So that's Wild Wolf Walks at the um, Facebook. All right, more questions? Yep. Uh, I've got one for you, James. Uh, you didn't ever mention about the fact that you had uh, problems with your back, sciatic nerve, and you might want to tell the group about that, because that, I know that kind of slowed you down for a bit, but I know you've got a good attitude, so you can maybe tell us how you overcame that. Are you happy? All right, yes, good, good attitude. Uh, starting end of October last year, anyone had sciatica here? Sciatica? One, two. Is it painful or is yes. it delightful? Shocking. Good word. How is yours, John? Painful. Terrible. Painful, yeah. So I'm 60 now. I was 59 last year. I kind of think I'm too young and too fit. But I woke up one morning and I had this pain in my back. I thought, Jesus, this is a bit weird. But I'm kind of allergic to hospitals. I don't get ill. I don't get sick. I don't go to hospitals. So I didn't bother going to the hospital. So November, December, January, February, March. I thought, Jesus Christ, this is getting worse, not better. And it got so bad, you had this massive, like, shooting pains down your leg. And sometimes it's 24 hours a day, isn't it? Unbelievable, just such pain, pain, pain. So when I went to see Take Care Kids in March, one of my reasons for walking from Paddy to Phuket, I thought, either it's going to kill me, my back's going to get so bad, or it's going to get better. And I don't know which, but I don't really want to go to a doctor. I'm not, you know, I don't want a surgery or anything, not yet, maybe as a second resort. So I start doing the walk, I walk into Bangkok, and it was really those two days we spent in Bangkok. Uh, we have friends from the running club, Mike and Marcel, Marcella, they've got a three bedroom house, and there was uh, uh, Dawn, Cracker Dawn was on the sofa, I had the baby bedroom, and he had the, 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 the main guest bedroom. Wow, the mattress in my room. Literally, you could knock the door, that damn thing was so hard. So two nights of sleeping on that. Ow, remember I said that one morning, he said, how are you doing? I said, not very good. My back really, really hurts. So anyway, we walk through Bangkok and then down towards Hua Hin, and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And finally, it was May 6th, because it was the day that King Charles got coronated. And I had a rest day that day at a friend's house, and she had a 75-inch TV and a beer refrigerator. You know, you imagine such a thing? And she got away, which was nice, so unlimited beer. But my back was so painful. This is upstairs in our home. She had four or five different styles of seats. She had an office chair, she had a couch, she had an armchair, she had a wooden chair, she had a rocking chair. You know, I'd spend five minutes in this one, and ow, ow, I can't it. Five minutes in this one, ow. So the three hours of coronation, she had a big coffee table in the middle. I just spent the whole three hours literally walking around and around and around and around because my back was just hurting so much. I had a couple of massages, but they didn't help. So the next day was a Sunday, and I'm walking 28 kilometers from Cha An to Hua Hin, and I walked past the pharmacy. I thought, okay, at least maybe I can buy some medication or something. So I go in there, and the pharmacist spoke really good English, really good English. He was a Thai man. And he seemed to be qualified as a doctor because he had a clinic in the back there. And he says, what's the problem? I said, I've had this really, really bad sciatica for the last six months. I said, you know, I'm dressed like this. I explain I'm walking to Phuket. What kind of strong medicine do you have that will kind of knock out this pain? And he had two, all right? So he had two, I forget the names of them, but they're regular kind of, um, uh, what do they call it, anti, anti-inflammatories? Right. One was an anti-inflammatory and one was something similar like that. So. The next day we arrive in Hua Hin and I found out about another medicine called Pox Number 9 or Pox 109. Anyone heard of that one? Okay, again, that's some kind of local anti-inflammatory. So I had three of these. So I said to the doctor, how many should I take? He says, you take one a day for these three because they're quite strong. Well, I took three the first day, three the second day, three the third day. And then I thought, well, they're not doing anything. I'll take two the next day. And I took two. And do you remember the the slide with the seven liters of beer, all right? 
about five minutes before we got to that restaurant, I remember thinking, wow, my back's not hurting. And when we sat down and drank the beer, I remember saying to those people, and actually I put on my video, I said, wow, hallelujah. I said, I think my back pain's gone. I don't know why. It has never come back to this day. That was May, no, that would have been about May, whatever, May 15 or May 19. It has never come back. But I kept taking the medicine, two a day, two a day, two a day for about another week. Then I took one a day, one a day, one a day, and then for the last, I don't know, month since I've been back, I've maybe taken one a week, just in case. Like today, actually, I feel a bit of back pain, but we were the hairs for our hiking club in Paria this last Monday, two days ago, and with chalk, I did a lot of arrows on the ground, and I think I just got a backache, you know what I mean? Anyway, good question, thank you for that one. But yeah, if you want to cure your sciatica, walk to Phuket. Yeah. And I'll give you the name of the medication to take as well. Another question? Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations. Yeah, right. It's an, an, an epic uh, walk. Epic's a good word, yeah. When I used to do my uh, talks, I would say yeah. epic walk, thank you. Yeah, and you uh, raised 257,000. Yeah, no. Plus the 71,000 from the first one. Congratulations. 20,000, yeah. You tried to make a million. I think Chang Beer ought to make up the balance. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Hip hip hooray for Chang Beer. Any more questions? One more. Right over here. If you want to know how many bottles of beer I drank, because I'm going through a financial crisis right now. These things happen in life here, don't worry about that. So I had two friends, one from Australia and another one local here. They both sponsored me for beer. The one guy sponsored me for two big bottles of Chang per day, and the other one sponsored me for two little bottles of Chang per day. So every day I tried to have at least two big bottles and two little bottles, because they had paid for it, you see. Otherwise they'd be really disappointed I didn't fulfill the quota. <laughs> so just in case you're wondering how many I drank. You uh, you say you walk, you walked on the expressway. Did the police give you a hard time or anything like that? I only ever saw three police. It's amazing. I walked for 39 days and had nine rest days, so the whole trip was 48 days. I only ever saw police three times. Two times they gave me water, which was really nice of them. And the other time they told me to bugger off because there'd been an accident. And it was I think it was just before I got to Cha Am. It was somewhere between Bangkok and Cha Am, and I hadn't seen an accident yet, I hadn't really seen anything exciting. So I stopped and I was taking some pictures and the policeman basically said, Oi, you, bugger off. So I had to oh, go. But no, so, no problems from the police so, at all. So when you walk the expressway, do you have to pay the toll? No, <laughs> I didn't walk on the toll roads. I won't walk away, it's like I'm with it anyway, yeah. Is that good enough? <laughs> he had an easy pass on his head. <laughs> Another question or you want me to finish? Here. <laughs> One more over there. Hello. And John, when we finish the uh, this question, can you play ten seconds of the? These boots were made for walking. <laughs> I, you started off in the Philippines in your presentation. Yes. Do you live there? Here. I did. I did live there for 24 and a bit years. Very quick story. Don't lease property in the Philippines and trust the Filipinos. I got robbed of a million dollar house. The lady still owes me nearly half a million US dollars. And she had me deported last year. 100% lies on her part against me. Does the immigration care? No. Do they listen? No. Do the courts care? No. So I shouldn't really tell you all that, it's nothing to do with the walks, but that's why I'm financially challenged right now, because of those people in the Philippines that I trusted. Everything in writing with the lawyers, nobody cares what the truth is. So if you want to get scammed, you can get scammed very easily. And it's basically ruined my life right now. And another reason I did the walk is because I don't have access to my children. Yes, we do video chats three or four days a week, but it's not the same as seeing them in person. I'm blacklisted for five years, having done nothing wrong apart from let this lady buy my house and my lands, which was all leasehold, which is perfectly legal in the Philippines. Sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> Very interesting. Was, was this lady your um, no 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 of interest? no? I had this mega property. It was uh, 23 acres of land and a 10 bedroom mansion that I built out there, and I sold it to her on a five and a half years uh, pay me when you can contract. You know, 
And all these post-dated, like 150 post-dated checks, all means nothing in the Philippines. It's supposed to be illegal to bounce checks. Oh, I just closed my account because he's a foreigner. I want to steal his house. Big mistake I made putting all the, there's four different lease agreements, putting them all in her name on the first day and giving her the keys to the house on the first day. I should have waited five and a half years and when it's all paid off, giving her the keys to the house and put all everything in her name. Anyway, that's another talk, yeah. <laughs> when I come back, but first I gotta go earn some money. All right, can you play the music, John? Okay, everybody stand up, I'm going. I want to make a special presentation. Uh, James Valentine, you, I have to really admire your enthusiasm. Valentine. And, and uh, like a on behalf of the uh, PCEC Club, we'd like to present you with this certificate of appreciation and for all you do for not only yourself, but the kids in uh, Fadia. Thank you very much.